This is the CAT Gallery, which is the Communication Arts Technologies Gallery, and welcome to it, and welcome back if you've been here before. Um, there are two galleries on this campus, and this one um, is for the Communication Arts Technologies Department, and so we try and focus on images in this gallery that might be applied to um, some of our programs. And, our programs are what they call applied art rather than fine art. So we have things like photography, illustration, graphic design, broadcast and radio, and computer graphics. As the coordinator of this gallery, I try and um, bring in shows that will be of relevance to people studying those kind of uh, programs. This particular show was originated from the Society of Illustrators in New York City, which is a national organization of professional illustrators. It's a, a traveling exhibition. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Society of Illustrators and how this show came about. But um, I first wanted to say, I wanted to thank the Montgomery College Arts Institute and David Phillips, who is the director of the Institute, for making it possible to bring this show here. Uh, the show originated in New York. I'm starting right here because this is Tara Jacoby, and uh, she works at the Society of Illustrators, but she's also an illustration student. She's still in school at FIT in New York. And she and Kate Firetag, and we'll see her work in a little while, were looking at a book at the Society of Illustrators that was 20 years old, and it was called Art for Survival. And um, as they were looking through the images in this book, they realized how many of these images are still relevant today. That after all of these years, there are still a lot of environmental problems, and they, these disasters keep happening. And they wanted to organize a show to com commemorate the 20th anniversary of that original book. So this is, this is one of her pieces, and I believe that she actually did this while she was in school. Kate and Tara recruited two um, professional illustrators, uh, Jack Unruh right here, and um, Greg Manchess, who for some reason is not part of the traveling show, but they recruited those two illustrators to help them recruit, to curate the show and invite other illustrators to um, participate. So here we have this wonderful collection of illustration from all over the world. We have an Australian artist in the show, and it spans generations. We have some younger artists, someone that's still in school, someone like Professor Murray Tinkleman who's, and, and Jack, who have been had a, an entire career doing illustration. And some of these pieces were done specifically for the show, their personal work. And you'll see the artist's statements here, and we might read a few of them. And then others, like this one, this is Wendell Minor. This was originally done as um, a book illustration. And you can see it was probably a double page illustration. Uh, Wendell Minor does a lot of book illustrations. And so we'll walk around and talk about some of the work, and then you can ask questions about any of them. I'm not going to do all 40 of them, obviously. But um, some of these works were done on commission. There's a piece down there that was a poster that was done for um, the World Wildlife Federation. This piece behind you, that uh, the bonefish right here by Murray Tinkleman, was done about 20 years ago for the New York Times op-ed page, and it's actually an editorial about, you know, environmental issues, the pollution of oceans, for example, and it's still relevant today. We're still having these problems today. Um, so um, I felt like this is something that's also near and dear to my heart, um, protecting the environment, nature, we uh, talked about the fact that illustrators quite often are given assignments um, that they may not know anything about. Uh, that's how we make our living as illustrators. So uh, quite often, in fact, most of the time, you are working on an assignment that originated from your client. And they pay you, so that's your job. Uh, so it's really wonderful when you get an opportunity to create art that um, 
is something about something that's near and dear to your heart and to be able to use your art in a way that may affect change, may help change the world and make it a better place. Uh, some of us, I've done a lot of work for the National Wildlife Federation, for example, and it's all, it's a wonderful thing when you can get paid and earn a living making art that is for something that brings about change, brings about something that makes the, the planet a better place. It's really wonderful, uh, these, uh, these artists, some of them do a lot of this, some of them did this specifically for the show, and again, they all, uh, they chose different topics that were of interest to them. I think we have here earth, air, water, energy, and wildlife. And so you'll, you'll notice different topics that are being addressed here. Uh, so I'm going to just walk around and point out a few that I know something about, and then I'll let you ask questions. Um, I will be talking about the technique that was used and um, the use, how this was originally done. So we can start over here with Jack Unruh. And I mentioned him earlier. He is um, an illustrator that has had an entire career. Um, we, showed, we just looked at some of his work a little while ago. And all of these people, you'll notice there's no program here, because I didn't want to print it on paper that was then going to go in the right recycling bin. But all of these artists um, have websites. There is also an Earth Fragile Planet website. If you Google Earth Fragile Planet, you will find all kinds of information and links to all these people's websites and blogs. It's, it's, it's turned into a global um, uh, movement, this, this, you know, using our art as um, a, 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 an effect for change. And so um, you can go and look at some of Jack's work, but he visited Yellowstone National Park over 50 years ago and many times since. The wilderness experience has been seriously eroded. There are too many people and not enough money to manage our most beautiful resource. So this is a, a statement about our national parks and the trouble that they're in. Jack works in pen and ink and then uh, uses watercolor to add color to certain parts of this. Okay. Uh, moving on here. Um, this, is, this one here is um, Greg Harlan. This is done in watercolor. Greg uh, actually is one of the few local artists. He's right here in Annapolis. He works with a studio and uh, does a lot of work. He does a lot of historical illustration and also a lot of work for um, uh, organizations like National Geographic. But you can see that it has something to do with, um, it says here, a year without summer. Okay. Um, we talked about Wendell Miner's piece right here. Wendell Miner has made a career of book cover illustration, uh, and he now does a lot of um, children's books. And I believe this one is acrylic on masonite panel, and he did this for Harper Collins. And so this was an actual book called Sierra. Uh, so you can actually buy this book and look at all the pictures. Um, it's one of the numerous children's books I've illustrated over the past 20 years that deals with nature and the environment. Uh, he actually travels a lot to these locations when he does his artwork. This one, again, this was Tara's piece. Um, and she's talking about um, Canis lupus, which is the wolf, also known as the gray wolf, a beautiful, shy animal that avoids human contact. Yet the main reason they are endangered in the United States is due to human-related issues. Um, and so this is a, you can read her statement here. This is a, a subject that she feels very strongly about. And when we looked at Tara's website, you'll notice that a lot of the work on there has to do with um, issues that she feels very strongly about. And she's trying to make her career uh, making art about those issues. This was done, um, it says gouache on ink, and, and ink. Uh, so a lot of these are done um, traditionally. There's some digital work in here, but a lot of these are uh, using traditional medium. Um, let's move on down here. Um, I particularly love this one. I particularly love all of them, but this one here is called Tierra Tiara. And we have this little tiara here made of windmills. And so I'm guessing that this is something like Mother Earth. 
This is by um, Alex Nabom. A few years ago, I witnessed some opposition to the building of a local wind farm near my home. Among the arguments was the, that turbines are ugly and clutter the environment. My disagreement inspired this piece. Rather than clutter the environment, I think the windmills adorn it like flowers in a bride's hair and give me hope of a cleaner future. Okay, lovely sentiment. This is um, gouache and digital. So a lot of these artists will start their work as a painting and then um, import it, uh, scan it, and um, he might have placed some of these images, um, this, the windmills, for example, in Photoshop. Uh, this one I don't know much about. It says watercolor digital. But I think this one speaks for itself. I think this is very universal. We saw um, images like this when we were working on our Earth Day posters, right? Yeah. And this one here we were looking at a few minutes ago, uh, and someone was asking about it. This says crayon on vellum. This is by Peter DeSev, who is a well-known illustrator, does a lot of work for the New Yorker magazine. Um, you've probably seen his work, and it doesn't look exactly like that. He tends to work in pen and ink and watercolor. And um, we looked at this on his blog, and this was inspired by the um, terrible oil spill in the Gulf. And um, he submitted this to the New Yorker for their cover, and it was not, it was not accepted. Um, and so this is just his sketch, and I love that this is in the show you, because you, uh, my students can see what sketches look like. That's what we do all the time, and that's what everybody's sketches look like. He was using crayon on vellum for his. And on his blog, if you go to his blog, you can see he also shows the piece that was accepted, which is by Barry Blit, and it's also very nice. Um, but I, I think this is a wonderful idea for... Um, to, to make a statement about that terrible disaster uh, over there. Um, this one uh, we talked about earlier. Can everyone see this piece by Adele Rodriguez? Now, you may have seen Adele's work. He is not local, but we see his work a lot in the Washington Post and the Washington Post magazine. This particular piece was done for the World Wildlife Fund, and we looked at this um, on the blog, and it was pr uh, promoting something called Earth Hour, was that it? Earth Hour? Mm -hmm. Where we all, I think they do this once a year, where we all turn our lights off for an hour. And l imagine the electricity you save if everyone turns their lights off for one hour. Um, and I guess that means turn the TV off and the computer off, and right? Um, okay, and moving on, um, Joe Chardello's work. Roughly 20,000 polar bears remain in the Arctic today. Uh, the ultimate extinction of the species is due to the decline of sea ice, the bear's feeding habitat, a result of climate change. Okay? This is, it says here, this is pen and ink, water, and prismacolor. Um, I don't see the prismacolor, but I'm sure it's there. I see pen and ink and watercolor, beautiful use of watercolor. James McMullen, another longtime illustrator. He does a lot of theater posters. Uh, he teaches up in New York City. This one was done for Time Magazine, and he's calling it Fragile Planet. Uh, beautiful image. Um, and then this one, we, these were intentionally put together because they work so well together. Uh, this is Kanuko Craft, another longtime illustrator. She does a lot of children's books. Some of you may have. Uh, seen some of her work before. Uh, this piece is called Gaia, which is, I believe, the Greek wor uh, word for land or earth. And you kind of have to step up close to this to see the beautiful, intricate detail in this. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that her idea was uh, Mother Earth. And you can see that Mother Earth is not doing too well at the moment. So we, the, the, the Earth protects us, and we need to do something to protect the Earth. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, it says here it's um, oil on board and then mounted on a panel. Um, uh, absolutely beautiful piece. And again, very detailed, very intricate. And then right here, 
you have this beautiful graphic simple image that's every bit as powerful. So there's uh, many ways to tell the same story. This one is about the improper use of water, about the waste of this essential source of life. Um, and this is digital. We can move around here a little bit. Um, everyone seems to respond to this one. This is called Global Warming, and it was done for Vanity Fair for their green issue. This is Anita Coons, uh, also very well-known illustrator. Um, does a lot of work for Rolling Stone magazine, Time magazine. Uh, Vanity Fair. And then this piece in the corner, which we were talking about, uh, several of us have talked about, I assumed that was digital, which I was very curious about because it's by an artist named Dougald Sturmer, who does a lot of um, natural science and wildlife illustration. And again, you're going to want to get these names and Google some of these people and see uh, the kind of work they do. So when I saw this piece, I was very surprised because he works usually in colored pencil, and I was surprised to see him working digitally. But if you look closely at this, it is not digital. That was done in colored pencil on blackboard, and it is amazing. Moving on, this one here is by Stephen Gardner. He had done two different sketches, and he had asked people to comment and choose which one they thought was the strongest. And they apparently chose this one. Uh, this is done in gouache. And then a lot of you are, are responding to this one. Uh, this is Tim O'Brien, uh, who works in oil and gouache on masonite panel. Yes, that's oil paint. And then this one I wanted to point out is by Sean Tan. Uh, Sean lives in um, Australia. So this is a global uh, effort here. Sean just recently won a, a, a huge award um, for Lifetime Achievement in Children's Illustration, one of the biggest awards available to children's book illustrators. And in addition, he just won an Academy Award for um, uh, one of his books that was uh, made into a, a short animated film, and it won the Academy Award. His books look amazing. Um, he does mostly children's books. You're, so you're probably going to want to go check out some of his books. Um, and this particular piece, he lives in Melbourne, Australia, which for about a decade has been afflicted by a drought with water restrictions occasionally prohibiting the washing of cars, watering lawns and gardens, and vigilance concerning misuse. Our local climate change is likely the result of human activity compounded by nat natural cycles. Australia being a sunburnt country of droughts and flooding rains, as aptly described by one national song. In either case, agricultural practices, industry, and a cherished suburban lifestyle with thirsty from, with thirsty from lawns have, been, have long been incongruous with the reality of our ecological landscapes, ideas transplanted from an alien culture. There is always hope for change, however, if we can recognize harmful dependencies, question norm normality, exercise our imaginations, and consider alternate ways of being. Um, this is Kate Firetag. It's nice we started with Tara and we're ending with Kate. Kate was the other um, person responsible for making this show happen. Uh, again, Kate graduated a few years ago from uh, SCAD, which is the um, Savannah College of Art and Design, and she's now working at the um, Society of Illustrators and producing this beautiful art. This is watercolor, gouache, and color pencil. And this was something I did not know about, so I'm hoping that you all are learning as much as I am about these environmental issues by looking at this show and looking at this beautiful artwork while learning about environmental issues. This is, says the Great Garbage Patch, also known as the Pacific Gyre, is the world's largest mass of garbage and is located in the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and San Francisco. Uh, it is roughly the size of Texas and contains about 3.5 million tons of trash, including shoes, toys, bags, wrappers, food packaging, and other toxic plastics that the earth cannot digest. 
In this image, a hawksbill sea turtle struggles in part of the garbage patch while vacationers relax under the sun of their island of trash, oblivious to the damages they have caused to the underwater world. Uh, absolutely beautiful piece. Um, and so gorgeous technique, gorgeous painting, gorgeous uh, drawing, and also uh, powerful content. And so that's what illustration is. It's making art that communicates. Thank you all for coming and enjoy. Mm -hmm.